This is the Brisbane Lions Fancast with Dom Fay and Michael Whiting. Week two of the Fancast for 2014. We will be joined later in the show by Luke McGuan, who I would now say is almost a, a hero within the Lions uh, among fans. But it was a good game on Sunday, Mark. You were up there in Townsville for it. What were your thoughts? Yeah, it was good, Dom. J- Justin Lepich is up and running now as a senior coach, isn't he? It's not a premiership match, but he's got his first win. And uh, as he touched on after the game, we started to see a few signs of what they'd trained for in the in the preseason so far. Patterns of play, work around the stoppages. The ball movement particularly was quite noticeable. And a couple of players, if they didn't seal their spot for round one, they certainly made them quite convincing cases. So I think Brisbane got everything they wanted out of that. Not only the win, but just players into form. So everything they would have wanted, I I would have thought. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think uh, we, many line fans were quite happy to see a strong, solid game plan with the ball in hand, which involved, I think the the commentators were saying on Sunday, a bit of a U formation. So if we weren't able to get four one way, they'd take the ball back, go across the field and go forward again. And that was exciting to see that uh, kind of a game plan forming. Do you think it's a game plan that can hold up and, and take a side towards, you know, a premiership? Well, I think so. And what it does is it your offense is guarding or it's helping your defense. Like the way they move that ball, if it comes in one side, they'll try and take it out the other side. They'll try and take it down a wing. Uh, just leaves the lines less susceptible to being opened up if they turn it over because they're going boundary line quite often. If they don't retain possession, there'll be a stoppage or a ball in or, or something like that. And it just doesn't allow teams to cut Brisbane up going the other way if there's a turnover. So it probably guards against um, quick scoring from the opposition. Or that, that's the theory anyway. I guess we'll see what it's like when there's some genuine pressure uh, yeah. in a game. But yeah, I, I think it's a, certainly a game plan that can take you forward and keep you competitive for a lot longer. I did think watching that game plan uh, evolve on, on Sunday that this is a game plan that's going to be much harder to have blowouts against. You know, you're not going to see mm. too many 100-point losses against this kind of a game plan because the defensive pressure as well when we didn't have the ball was as good as I've ever seen from a Brisbane Lions side, at least in since the Premiership years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it, it is hard to know it's because we, as we touched on last week, Gold Coast had their four or five best midfielders out, so... Brisbane were able to get their hands on the ball first and get it going forward, which is obviously quite helpful. So I guess we'll see it. The Lions play Sydney in in a week or two as in the last practice match uh, before the season starts. So that'll be another test. And then obviously the season starts with Hawthorne and Geelong in the first two weeks. So we get a real good test then against genuine midfield pressure. So, uh, But all signs are good so far. That's the first time uh, Justin Lepich has had his best team at his disposal and able to implement the game plan he's tried. It's going to take a while, but that was a positive sign on Sunday. Talking about uh, individual players, I was impressed uh, very much by Luke McGuan, who, as I said, we will be chatting to briefly. I thought he offered us something up forward, not just offensively, but also defensively. He chased very hard. He laid a few very good-looking tackles. Uh, and also, I thought James Aish in the midfield really did start to show the signs that people have been saying he's, you know, the, the heir apparent to Simon Black. And, and I did see that with his handballing work in tight. He, uh, he did have shades of black there. And I was also uh, very impressed by, obviously, Tom Rockcliffe and, and Jack Redden, who you'd be hoping this year will take the, the step firmly into the elite category of the competition. And uh, so far, signs are good. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, Luke McGuan, as much as the three goals in the first quarter, as you touched on it, was his defensive pressure. And I think that's what he's, that's how he's going to win his spot in the team. Justin Lepich has already indicated that he's keen to use Trent West as a second ruckman and forward. Jonathan Brown will be in the forward line. So you've got a couple of bigger, sort of less mobile guys up there. So you need everyone else to be able to, I guess, have a little bit of an extra emphasis on defence with those other guys. And that's where Luke McGuan will sort of come into his own. James H was very good. Didn't get a lot of the ball, but as you touched on, his work in traffic is really good. Something he probably didn't come to the club with a reputation of. Rockliffe was his usual self. Redden, very good. I thought Brent Maloney was very good. Most of those guys you'd expect to play well, well did, yeah. Yeah, and obviously there was great news just before this game with Sam Mays recommitting for two more years. And I have to say, we were sitting here, Mike, uh, last October while all the trades were going on. And, and from that to this with Mays recommitting, I have to say it's very welcome news. Yeah, sure is, Dom. There was never a doubt in my mind that Sam was going to recommit to the club. He fitted in so well and just embraced Brisbane and the Lions since he's come here 12 months ago. It's well known that he moved in with a couple of uh, other first-year players last year and they got on like a house on fire. And 
He's made all the right noises. He came back to preseason early, started a week or two before he was due to. So never a doubt. But to do it at the start of the season is very comforting, I guess, for, for Sam and for Lions and, and the Lions supporters. Definitely. And also uh, anyone who picked up a copy of the, I think, Sunday Mail, either that or Monday's Career Mail, would have seen the story from Andrew Hamilton that the Springfield base is now uh, up in the air, that, that something that everyone was talking about last year as being a great step forward for the club and, and had a whole lot of hope around it, now may not go ahead because they're struggling to find the, the government funding. Not ideal news for the club, is it? There's, <laughs> I guess once the once there was a change of government at the last federal election, there was always going to be a question mark over it. And it may still happen, but there's, there's huge, huge question marks over it now. So it puts Brisbane in an awkward position, doesn't it? They want to have this cash quite quickly. That training and admin facility is meant to be up in a couple of years, so there's a lot of there's, there's a lot of head scratching probably to do over the next couple of months, and a lot of options to go through. As Bob Sharpless was quoted as saying in that article, uh, and as Malcolm Holmes said at a press conference on Monday, they they do have to start looking at at other alternatives in case this one doesn't come through. I think it's 2015 that the current lease at the Gabba runs out. It does, yeah, so the end of the season. Yeah. End of 2015, so something needs to be sorted before then or else a new lease at the Gabba will want to be sorted. And I think with how much that's cost in a club, that would not be an ideal situation. So what do we look at then? Is Do you look at Cooperoo? Do you look at Yoronga? Do you go back and look at QE2 again? What do you reckon? I guess you've got to look at all those things. As you said, the Gabba's not an ideal uh, option because there's simply not enough space there for the club. I was told yesterday the that Brett Burton, the club's conditioning guru, has to put his uh, team through. There's, there's three weights groups that have to go through. They can't all do it together. So there's just inconveniences mm. like that. So I'm sure if the Lions wanted to stay at the Gabba, they could. I don't think there's going to be a, a problem there. And I don't know how long the, they'd have to sign a lease for. It's something that the club has to figure out. But those other options are probably a, a little more desirable. QE2 is probably the option where there seems to be plenty of space and plenty of facilities there. So I guess you'd have to go back and revisit that. Yeah, as a Wishart local, I'd be very much behind. They're moving to <laughs> QE2. I'll just put that out there. You should be a training regular. <laughs> oh, definitely Dom's would be. Dom's put his vote in. <laughs> I, I, the club's obviously still hopeful of Springfield, though. Um, I haven't heard back from the government. I'm not as privy to the government as information as, as others may be when it comes to that funding. But there's still a little bit of water to go under the bridge there. It's not looking promising, but there is still a little bit to play out and I guess that's still the desired option and that's where there's so much growth and there's a lot of there's a lot of scope for uh, for money out in that in that neck of the woods out in that western corridor so I guess we'll see what happens but it certainly wasn't wasn't ideal news for the Lions. Yeah certainly not that is a story that I'm sure there'll be plenty more on throughout the year and we'll follow that up when it happens. After this on the fancast we're chatting to Luke McGuan who kicked three goals on the weekend against the Suns. He's joining us after this. The best way to keep track of everything Lions is to head to lions.com.au. It's the first place to find the latest Lions news and videos, get the lowdown on upcoming games, results and player stats. There's also great ways to interact with live chats, downloads and Player of the Year voting updates. And with a social media hub, you can connect with all the Lions social media activity. lions.com.au. Everything Lions, all in one place. We're joined on the fancast today by, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, cult hero Luke McGon. Welcome to the fancast, Luke. How are you going? Good, thanks, mate. You're definitely going out on a limb doing that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, you had your first time in Lions Colours on Sunday and quite an incredible first touch. How did you find playing alongside your new team on Sunday? Yeah, mate, I loved every second of it. Uh, it was really enjoyable. So I was pretty excited to get out there in the new colours and uh, with all my new teammates, so I had a ball. Luke, can you tell us about uh, your move to Brisbane? Obviously, it's a, a move home of sorts for you. How have you found your first pre-season? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a bit different for me, mate. I'm, um, I'm obviously a Gold Coast boy, so coming back to Queensland, uh, you'd think I'd be used to the heat, but the heat has uh, taken its toll a little bit. But um, at the same stage, I've been injured for a lot of the pre-season due to a uh, clean-up in my knee, but um, I'm definitely getting there now, um, and I don't think I'll get too much hotter than what we got on uh, Sunday in Townsville. There were certainly rumours around you returning up to, to Brisbane and to the Lions uh, that have been around for the past few trade periods. How good was it to finally be able to secure a place at the club and, and return home? Yeah, it had been rumoured for quite a while. I'm not sure how true the rumours were up until probably this year. So, I mean, I suppose it happening this year does make it seem like it was uh, pretty real the last few years. But this year, uh, it was definitely um, definitely on my mind to come up. And uh, I think hopefully it was on um, Brisbane's mind to get me. So then we went from there and uh, worked out, thank God. 
Obviously, you've got a, um, a link and a connection with Justin Lepage. Can you tell tell us and tell the fans out there what sort of, um, I guess, connection you do have and what sort of role he played in, in luring you back here? Yeah, well, I suppose um, he was my backline coach to start off with at Richmond. We obviously started a relationship there. And then um, further into it, I suppose, he went to the um, offensive coach and uh, I was up in the forward line by that point. So um, we pretty much spent... A lot of time together uh, when I was at Richmond, but uh, when he decided he was coming up to Brisbane, and he, uh, I mean, he knew that I was keen to come up already. So I think um, at that point, uh, when we spoke, we were hoping that we would be able to get a deal done, and uh, thank God we did. And it's happened now, and um, I'm grateful for it. Uh, coming up to the club, you had probably just come a bit after a whole lot of talk. Obviously, there was a fair bit of drama going on behind the scenes last year. I'm just wondering what your impressions have been of the club over the preseason. Has the talent there surprised you, or has it been about what you expected? What have you been your, your initial impressions? Um, I think the list is in really good stead, um, with a, a few things that Justin's um, tinkered since he's come to the club. I think we're in really good hands at the moment, and I think the club's in a pretty strong place. Uh, I mean... If you look at it, we only missed the finals by one kick last year. So I think now with a few more things tinkered and um, the club only going to get stronger from this point in, I think uh, we've got a pretty bright future. Do you expect that future to be this year, Luke? Like there's been a, obviously there's a hole in the list from the, the five guys that left, uh, the younger guys that left in the last trade period. What sort of success do you expect this year and, and how immediate can it be, do you think? Oh, I mean, yeah, you're not going to put a cap on it, obviously. So... Obviously, the boys go out there every week to win, so um, everyone's goal is finals. That's just how it is. We don't go out there thinking, oh, well, we just want to improve. We actually go out there knowing that we want to win and we want to make finals. That's how it is. Um, I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't bother playing if you went out there every week hoping to just, just improve sort of thing. So oh, you wouldn't put a cap on it. Um, I'd love to play finals and love to play them this year, and I'm, hope, I'm very hopeful that will happen, but... At the same stage with the um, with the, those younger guys leaving, I really honestly don't believe it has left that much of a hole in the side. And the, we got a lot of draft picks for it, and we've um, we've compensated pretty well. Um, and I mean, the, the guys that left weren't all regular senior players either. So. Obviously, you did spend a fair bit of time at Richmond. I'm just wondering if you've uh, penciled in or drawn a circle around the Easter Thursday clash against the Tigers at the Gabba. If you're you're quite looking forward to that one. <laughs> yeah, I hope I am playing. Um, no, I am looking forward to that game in particular. But um, just looking forward to getting out there round one at the moment and hopefully uh, continuing uh, continuing our good form from the weekend. Luke, can you tell us about about your role a bit? You're probably uh, in one of the most hotly contested parts of the ground at the Lions, aside from uh, Jonathan Brown, obviously, who's sort of an automatic selection when he's fit. Those, those other key forwards are pretty hotly contested with yourself and... Uh, Brent Staker when he's fit and Jordan Lyle and there's young guys like Michael Close and Marco Paperone. Can you tell us how you found, I guess, sort of battling with those guys in the preseason and also what feedback you've got from Justin and the rest of the coaching staff as to where you'll sort of fit into the mix? Yeah, I mean, at the moment, I think it's all still suck and see just with preseason, um, especially in the preseason games. I suppose that's why we have them to find out where everyone's going to kind of settle in and find their spot so um, obviously Big Brownie has been around for quite some time so he's going to he's gonna take his usual role and then uh, we'll all filter in around him um, but I don't think you could probably name where you're going to play or who's going to play where just yet until we're um, I mean even sometimes around two or three still up for grabs sort of thing. Now uh, there's been a history of AFL players who have changed clubs midway through their career and started a new phase of their career and really accelerated. I mean, you can look at, uh, I suppose, a, a very notable example: someone like Jay Schultz, who went to Port Adelaide and really had made a name for himself there, and is now one of the, the premier forwards of the competition there. Is uh, your focus coming to the Lions to really kind of show consistency now, or is it to, to really take that step into the the premier forwards of the competition? What what's your focus coming into the year in a new club? Yeah, definitely. I mean, someone like Joe Schultz is a really good example. Um, I mean, he got he went to a new club, and yeah, he has become a, a real force up there um, for Port Adelaide. Um, I mean, at the moment, I don't think I'll be the, um, the like a, a key point focus sort of thing. I think Brownie's always going to be that while he's playing, just a bigger body. Um, second tall, third tall forward is going to be more my sort of thing. But I mean, goals-wise, I'd still like to be right up there in the count. 
And obviously, the I guess the defensive pressure is a huge side of your game, Luke. Is that the way? Is that sort of the the indication you've been given from the coach? Is that your primary focus, or are you you trying to focus just as much on kicking goals as you are on making tackles and harassing the opposition defenders? Uh, yeah, both. I mean, like like you said, I, like, I enjoy that side of the game, like the chasing and tackling. I played defence for eight years at Richmond, sort of thing. At last, the last two, I went up forward. But um, I mean, I still enjoy the chasing, tackling, harassing, all that sort of thing. So, um, and I mean, it's obviously a really important part of the game these days. You can't just rely on midfield and backs. So the the, the defence starts with the forwards. Um, so, I enjoy that side. Side of things, but I'll be concentrating on both uh, both sides of my game, offense and defense. And uh, Lou, obviously, you'd be in the man as good a position as anyone to comment on this. But Justin's come to the club, obviously, with a great influence from Damien Harbutt being under him for quite a few years. Can you see a sort of direct comparison between the game plan Justin's trying to implement and, and what you've just experienced at Richmond? Yeah, I mean, Leper's obviously taken a lot. Like he had a great coach in Lee Matthews as well, and um, I mean, he would have had a lot of coaches throughout his time. So. He would have taken the best of um, bits and pieces that he could out of each coach. And um, so, I mean, he's done a really good apprenticeship if you look at the people he's been under and then the, the three-peat premiership side that he was in. So, um, I mean, his experience you can't buy and um, what he's, uh, I suppose, who he's worked with and who he's been under this whole time you can't buy either. So he's, uh, he's in a really good position right now and he's going to, um, I think he's going to be a really good coach for the Brisbane Lions. Just before we let you go, I put out on Twitter that we were getting you on the show and Matt has tweeted in uh, asking, because obviously it was quite a dramatic process, uh, you saying that you wanted to come to the club and the club trying to fit you into the list for a while there. Matt wants to know, is there any stage where you thought that your AFL career might be over? No, not technically. I think um, if it was going to look that way, I think I would have been re-signing with Richmond. But um, I did go out on a limb and say I wanted to leave, so it would have been been a difficult time. But... um, at that point, I don't think I ever really considered the fact my AFL career was going to be over. But I did, I suppose, play it risky by saying I wanted to come home to Queensland. Well, thanks for joining us on the fan cast today. All the best for the season ahead. Hopefully we can see many more goals like that first one you kicked on Sunday. <laughs> thanks, guys. Appreciate it.